Yo guys, I'm Dunmere, I'm a top 100 Overwatch and now rank 3 Supervive player, and here is a guide for Void. I have over 400 hours of playtesting experience during my one and a half years of pre-alpha playtesting, so I hope you guys get something good out of this. Let's start off with an ability rundown. Void's primary fire is a cleaving orb projectile that can travel through walls and changes based on how often it is fired. Fire faster and the speed, range, and damage decreases. At full charge, the orb also gains an extra quality of applying a slight slow effect on enemies it hits. Void Secondary Fire is a solo target stun projectile. After a short windup, Void fires out a blast that will travel out and stun the first enemy it hits. The stun time increases based on how far the projectile travels. Void's E ability is a location casted damage bomb. Though the ability can be reacted after a short time to explode it, the bomb grows in size and damage with time. Give it time to cook up and it will become quite massive and dangerous. Void's Movement ability is an area of effect location swap. Lob a projectile at a location to swap Void and any units in the circle around him for any units in the projectile location. This ability can also teleport miscellaneous objects like death boxes. Void's ultimate is a short range black hole stun ability. After a short cast delay, Void summons a black hole in front of him. Any enemies caught in it will be pulled to the center and hard CC'd. This means that they will be incapable of moving, attacking, or using abilities for its full duration. Void's passive ability is an empowered state. Deal enough damage in a short time period to become empowered gaining buffs to his Black Hole ultimate, his swap, and his location placed bomb ability. While empowered, his ultimate gains a large increase in size. His void swap gains a near half decrease in cast time, and his bomb gains a larger max size and an increased size growth speed. His passive also has a second part of it that makes him have no footstep noise while walking. Having covered the abilities, let's talk about Void's strengths and weaknesses. Void's first and most influential core strength is his powerful crowd control capability. His first CC ability, his range stun, gives him a consistent and powerful ability to lock down a single target. Though it isn't quite as oppressive as some other CC in the game, it can reliably punish aggressive enemies if used correctly because of how it can consistently set up enemies for a void bomb combo. Yet more than this is his powerful ultimate which is the hardest form of CC in the game. There aren't many ways to protect allies and supervive, so if a void manages to catch somebody, they're almost certainly dead, which makes void a huge threat in a fight. In addition to this, void also has the second core strength of excellent team mobility utility. This comes from his swap ability. Of course, it's quite valuable for doing things like teleporting a team across a wall, in addition to using it for an ultimate combo with a character like Celeste. But it offers much other value too, as it allows Void to teleport ally wisps also. This makes Void surprisingly useful as a support mid-team fight. Casting a swap doesn't produce much downtime, so he can still poke off and threaten enemies while taking an ally wisp to a reservoir location. And since he's got such powerful CC on top of this, he can reliably pull this off solo. Void's third core strength is his pressure through walls. Though he doesn't quite have the pressure of a character like Kingpin, he has multiple ways to threaten enemies through walls. His primary attacks can go through walls, his ultimate can pull enemies through walls, and both his Void Bomb and Swap can also go through walls. This gives Void a quite effective way to compensate for his lack of raw damage output, since he can just position himself behind cover in fights, and then bully enemies from where they can't easily hit him. Now let's talk about the weaknesses. Though Void is quite powerful in some areas, he also has the most problematic and distinct weakness of any character in Supervive. And though this isn't even his most fundamental weakness, it's important to mention also that he lacks consistent damage. It forces him to consistently land stun combos to contribute much directly to the fight, while other characters can miss cooldowns and still get value. Yet as I mentioned, this isn't his biggest flaw, even though it's quite substantial. His biggest flaw is that he suffers from a lack of a true dash. He does have his swap ability, but it has the problems of being slow and predictable. In other games, this might not be such a massive problem, but in Supervive, it harms him in two key ways. The first is that Supervive is built around the concept of Abyss and the capability to fight over it. During gameplay, there often comes times when players need to push across the Abyss, which may also be into enemies. Since the spiking system exists, gliders aren't always a reliable way to do so, but every character other than Void at least has one dash with which to deal with this. Void just doesn't, so anytime he needs to jump across the Abyss, he's at a severe disadvantage. This also leads into the secondary problem of Supervive being an isometric battle royale. It's extremely important to know when and where from enemies are coming in a battle royale. Otherwise, you're vulnerable to being surprised or stuck getting third party. Yet Supervive's camera angle makes this even more difficult, as you can't see much around you. Other characters can use their dashes to make up for this somewhat, as it can get them out of a sticky situation they were surprised by. Void, though, is likely to be caught up and killed while he waits for a swap to go off. So in the same way Avoid lacks the ability to properly react to abyss situations, he can't react well to getting third partied. And with all the displacement abilities in the game, he's even more vulnerable to being pushed over the abyss and spiked, or killed from his predictable swap cast. So with the strengths and weaknesses discussed, let's talk about how to actually play Void. Void gets most of his value from playing strictly to his strengths and weaknesses. Void gets most of his value from playing strictly to his strengths and weaknesses, until he can become empowered and gain some flexibility. 
Specifically, he wants to compensate for his low mobility by playing at distance to punish enemies that can hard dive him, and also attempt to bypass his limited range by poking through walls against enemies with longer range than him. If he can do these, he'll reliably get to stun out enemies that engage on him, or bully enemies that can't hit him through walls. Either way, he'll likely gain his empowered state and become strong enough to hunt his enemies down. With that as an overview, let's get into specific strategy for Void's abilities. Void's primary fire damage isn't that impressive, so you won't really win a lot of primary fire 1v1s against many other characters. This means that you just don't want to be trading damage with enemies like other characters in Super 5's roster can. So what do you do? The solution is that you really need to secure an advantage before you deal damage with it. With a slower empowered shot, this advantage can either be having better range or having a wall to shoot enemies through, so these should definitely be looked for and used. The max fire rate attack is low range, so it'll be a bit harder to use for these purposes. Instead, you'll only mainly want to use it on the advantage of an enemy being stunned near you, where you're then free to spam them as much as you can. For Void's ranged stun ability, it offers great offensive and defensive utility. It is quite powerful and gains extra stun time when landed on a distant enemy, but this doesn't mean you should always use it for its range. Rather, its usage style is best if tailored to the enemy team. Void's lack of mobility makes him too vulnerable to divers, so not having your stun as one extra defense tool against them is just too dangerous. Not to mention it guarantees an ultimate follow-up that will nearly always net you a kill. If the enemies don't have highly mobile characters though, then you don't need to worry about this and you're free to fish for range stun and void bomb combos. This leads us into Void's next ability, his location targeted bomb. Of course, the primary way you want to use this is as a part of a stun combo, since if you land any stun you can guarantee a void bomb follow-up on the enemy. It's especially useful to save it for this if you're distant from your allies, as a huge portion of your damage will come from the bomb alone. However, it's important to get used to the stun timing at different distances for your ranged stun, as the bomb does increase in damage over time, so you can min-max it this way for more damage. This isn't the only way to use the ability though, as it's also very useful as an area denial tool. The bomb grows both in size and damage with time, so you can use it defensively to deter enemies from pushing through a location, or stop an enemy from playing a very specific side angle for around 6 seconds. Or, you can even use it as part of an aggressive trap strategy, by placing it behind an enemy team that has pushed through a narrow area. Either they're forced into your stun or ult, or they'll get chunked by your void bomb that can grow to near one-shot levels of damage. Onto void swap ability, this is when things get really exciting, as it has so much potential. Of course, it can be used to reposition your team, such as into a safe area near a fight or through otherwise impassable walls. But it does so much more too, such as enabling team wiping potential combos by doing things like teleporting a Celeste that is mid ult. It also lets Void get into position to pop his ultimate, and could even allow him to kidnap enemies into a fully charged Void Bomb. Yet in addition, it provides restorative value also, since it can be used to teleport knocked allies to a safe location they can be resed at, which is one of its most powerful use cases. There are other characters that can do this too, like Zeph and Aluna, but there aren't any that can teleport full death boxes. Void can though. This gives him a unique ability to pull death boxes to places a box res can be secured. So whether you're pulling it out of the storm or sneakily yoinking it through a wall from an enemy team, you'll find great value using it as such. However, it's also important to know that Void's teleport has two methods in which you can use it. One where you swap yourself with something by just tossing your swap onto it, and two where you teleport yourself with something by tossing your swap where you want to go and then standing next to what you want to bring with you. They both have important use cases, but aiming to bring something with you is very useful for things like bringing your ally out with you, or even something like using it to sneak in and kidnap an enemy. Moving on to Void's ult, it's also a very powerful ability like his swap, but you'll really want to look to get it empowered before you pop it. Sure, if you land a close range stun and can solo ult a single enemy before it's empowered, then go for it. But if you're looking to use it against unstunned enemies, you'll really want to get it empowered for max size first. Yet despite this, you don't want to look at it just as a tool to kill enemies with, as it's also a great defensive weapon. So you could use it for something like stopping enemies from pushing long enough to swap out of a losing fight, or just continue holding it throughout a fight unless needed. That way, enemies must continue expending extra resources simply to protect themselves from its threat. So with the specifics covered, let's talk about how to apply this into a full playstyle. As I've mentioned, Void is a very extreme character. He has very high power spikes, but also very low weakness dips. So Void really needs to play to counter his weaknesses for long enough that he can become strong, or, the, or until the enemy will slip up and make a mistake that he can punish. This means that when considering how to actually play Void, you need to keep this view of compensating for his weakness of low mobility and medium range in mind. So the first thing to consider is how mobile his enemies are. If they are highly mobile, Void needs to default to playing from far range to compensate for his low mobility. This way you can force the enemy to die from at least right outside of Void's empowered auto range, and hopefully outside the range of an ally you have that has even farther shots. Either way, if you don't position where the enemy will have cover, this will give Void an opportunity to stun them up and kill them after they've committed dashes that they normally could have used to dodge a stun. This will basically guarantee they'll have no escape if they don't kill you when they go super hard, or at least pressure them to not go so hard in the first place. On the other hand, if they don't have massive mobility, then Void is free to position more aggressively. However, Void will still lose most raw damage trades and doesn't have amazing rage in general. So he'll need to abuse balls in this situation to get close enough to his targets so that he can farm his empowered version and become strong enough for a straight up fight. The goal from both sets of these playstyles is to secure his empowered form in an aggro. Once he is empowered, he simply becomes a much bigger threat. 
He'll be able to secure a much more powerful follow-up on any stunts he lands. His ult will be much more viable as an aggressive tool while also making smart enemies refuse to get close. And his swap will become much quicker for easier aggro and more reliable for kiting. So after Void finds himself empowered, either by surviving an enemy dive, or having there not been a dive in the first place and him having poked enemies, he can then push up. This way he can pressure enemies until an opportunity for a range stun opens up. Then he can almost certainly kill or nearly kill from the bonus Void Bomb damage he now has. And throughout this, he'll have his increased size ult too. So even if an opening for a multi-target ult doesn't show up, enemies will be forced to respect him much more and not get too close. This will just give Void more and more pressure that he and his team are sure to benefit from. However, regardless of Void becoming quite powerful, it's still incredibly important to focus on his positioning. Though he does become much stronger when empowered, his other capabilities including his HP and attack range don't change. So you still should be heavily focusing on determining how aggressively you can actually play, and then positioning off this. Which should definitely be stronger than before, just still with limits. This still means you need to focus on covering your weaknesses to longer sideline characters by using cover. And despite being empowered, if you use your ult, your strength will be down enough that you likely need to slow down and cut your aggro, unless your team is just winning very significantly. Of course, throughout all this, you should always watch for opportunities to teleport out ally Wisp Perez. This is an extremely high value default that will net you many wins. In addition to this, you can sometimes use your swap also to steal an enemy Wisp that the enemy could have gotten to, this way that it can be rezzed. These type of situations will be common in neutral fights at moderate range. However, though this is the way you should default to playing Void, he is somewhat flexible, so he does have other niche things he can look for during gameplay. Here are a few extra options in their use cases. As mentioned, Void can also use his AoE damage bomb to manipulate enemy positioning when he wouldn't need it otherwise. For example, if Void knows he'll be standing with his teammates, and so will have their follow-up damage, it can be used to block off a side angle in a pinch, or to do something like stop enemies from pushing through a choke point or chunk them for a bunch of damage when they're inevitably being forced through one. Additionally, it can be used to buy time to get swapped back. If you're under threat and don't have your swap, you can cast your AoE damage bomb at your feet to stop enemies from jumping on you. Then you can continue to stand on it until you get your swap back and then fully use your swap to escape. You could also cast your swap on top of a bomb you placed down and try to kidnap an enemy into it before activating it for a kill. On top of these, you have other options like set play swaps when you have a character like Celeste as previously mentioned. This will let you do things like teleport a Celeste mid ultimate right into the enemy team. These are all things you should experiment with, but they definitely should not be your main go-to. They're usually very situational, so while you may get value exploiting them in lower ranks, the use case for each will become more narrow as players improve and begin to look for them. This means you'll gain much more consistent value from playing responsibly, and saving your abilities for what will generally secure you and your team the most consistent value, which will also allow you to improve the most as a Void player too. Yet I didn't say not to do funky things entirely, so go out there and have some fun too.